going on, world? We are back. It's the K-Fabie Baby NRW Wing Generals podcast, and I'm joined by the NRW's trios champions, my champions. Uh, first up, I got the voiceover king, Mr. Sean Mongold. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm ready. You know, January is about to come to a head. Yes. We're about, to, we we're about some... to rumble. Yo, we are about to yeah. rumble. Is that this weekend shit? No, it's next weekend. Next okay, weekend. cool. I was about to say, because yeah, like, Webster Style, I think we missed some. Nah. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> the man of fashion, the man of style, also the man of gaming here at the NRW, Mr. Webster Style, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, my brother. How about you? I'm wonderful, man. It's great to see y'all gentlemen. We got some things that popped off. Unfortunately, my girl didn't pop off because that was our big prediction last week. She didn't show up, but that's okay. We'll see what happens. I think uh, there's a lot to talk about besides that uh let's kick it off let's head over to AEW. let me throw the webster style man you, you came up with this amazing breakdown uh kick us off with AEW. we got hook versus samoa joe uh coming yeah. up yeah so that's i think tonight oh yeah, as of tonight. this recording yeah, yeah. as of this going that is tonight i am so we talked about the build-up but i'm not mad at this so i'm interested to see how it goes i hope that I feel like it'd be a good match. I, I feel like, well, Joe's one of my favorite wrestlers, period. And and I will not say a hook is a slouch because be because he's not. I I think it'll be an entertaining match. I think it'll be a fun match. I'm curious to see what sort of angle they're going to go with this. And that's because per our conversation last week, and they kind of threw strickland shane in there so he's kind of orbiting around to calling shots and calling people out so i'm curious to see what kind of story comes from this because i don't think that i mean i don't think anybody think hook is going to win tonight <laughs> nah i think we would all put good money that there's yeah. no way he would win tonight and that's you know obviously i have issue with it i had issue with the last week i have issue with this week mm -hmm. you know last week we can't you know we kind of talked about it before dynamite last week then dynamite hit of course it was the brody lee um kind of you know tribute show uh because they were back at daily place um and i understand that but i mean that you know it was just a boring fucking dynamite man like i just i could i you know adam, adam cole came out you know did Literally the same promo again about how everyone's going to get gold. MJF is going to get the AEW champion, or not MJF, fucking uh, Wardlow, Wardlow is going to get the, the AEW championship and then hand it off to me when I'm healed. And it's just like you literally did the same exact thing last week. Like you didn't, you didn't do anything. It, you know, like Wardlow didn't come out. And like that's what, like what's crazy is Smojo came out maybe like an hour later. And then Swerve came out, and then Cowboy came out. So like, I'm happy with that because I was a little, I was a little upset with how they were like bouncing back and forth, where they had Swerve, you know, going against Samoa and cutting these, oh, going against MJF and cutting these promos. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm hyped to see it. And then they fucked that up because then Joe took the belt off, and then he started cutting promos against Joe. And I was like, all right, cool. But then, you know, they they rekindled the the yeah, Cowboy, like the Hangman, Swerve thing, but. You know, this time, you know, on Dynamite last week, Swerve came out, you know, talked to shit, and then Hangman also came out, and then all three of them are in the ring. I was like, okay, it's going to be a triple threat. I can get behind that. You know, you, you have Revolution coming up on the horizon. Make it a triple threat. That would be great. However, at the end of that promo, they, Hangman and Swerve leave, and then the hook comes out. And they have like this Batman, you know, symbol hook up in the yeah, ceiling. And people are like, oh, look at this angle. This looks so cool. And I'm like, it looks it. dumb. Yeah, that was that was stupid. It was so dumb. It made zero sense. You know? Like, and then he comes out, doesn't say anything. I think he like not without a mic, like with a mic, without a mic, he just goes, you know, like, I'll see you next week. I don't get it i don't get the whole like oh, okay let's have these people confront joe then this person can vote front joe it, like it doesn't make sense and then they put hook in like this weird squash match 
you know, on collision or rampage i think it was i can't remember which one it was but they they had him go like it was like a fucking two minute match with kevin marshall i think i can't remember his name but i, it, I saw it i don't i don't know who the guy i is. don't i don't what was the point like to make hook yeah. look strong and then what are you going to do are you you know like you're going to have him have a good match I, I guess that's cool, I guess, but like, I'm tired. Like, we already had that nonchalant, non speaking champion in Orange Cassidy. You don't need another one. You know, yeah. you're looking forward to this triple threat match now. Hook, they're doing the same thing that WWE does, where they are leading up to this big thing coming up down the line that everyone's anticipating. But then you're trying to like throw these other people at the champion, the fighting champion. And you know they're not going to win. You know? Like, yeah, it might be an entertaining match. But we know what's going to happen. Hook's not winning this fucking thing. Yeah. Like, no. And that that just takes me out. Like, when I know, like, when it's, when it's too predictable like that, it takes me out. And I have that critique with WWE. And now AEW is getting into the realm. You know? Like, AEW used to be very unexpected like you didn't know who was going to win what and now it's just like it seems a little bit more i don't know and it's not they're not even telling a story with it and that's my thing yes i, I like i like no, don't get me wrong like i i like how they're bringing hangman and swerve story and kind of like bringing in joe into it because now it's like those two are chasing after the title against each other like headed head but they also have to go against joe too so if there's like a no DQ or a steel cage triple mat like uh, triple threat match, what we were talking about last week, we we're like, hey, how do you one up, you know, the Texas death match that you know Hangman and Swerve had? If you get those three motherfuckers in some kind of like cage no DQ shit, that's going to be up there, in my opinion. You know, it, it's not squashing their rivalry, but it's continuing it on who can get the title first. You know. Right. Like a swerve going to be the first black champion before Hangman is a two-time world champion. And so I, I like that story. If they go with that, that's amazing. I love it. But the hook shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. What yeah else we that that dynamite lit me with blue balls. That was like a Bro. blue balls dynamite. Like I was so Bro. excited because we had like, you know, this possible prediction. And then it was like, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, man. I, you know, match, like, come on, man. Yeah. With, he's too old to be doing half of that shit to be running around there. And I think I heard yeah. like Tony Schiavone was like, "Are you fucking crazy? Like, you're an idiot." It, it, he like called him an idiot, but like, you don't need to be doing stuff like that at your age. Um, yeah, I, I do respect it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, I do, I do respect it. But yeah, I mean, he he should be a little bit safer, especially with his big match coming up. Um, but I mean, I, I like the fact that he's going out there, like if he's safe and if he knows it, you know, um, and I think I, I read an interview or I saw something where I think Sammy Guevara was talking about when he was going against Sting and did like a, like a, a 450 or a 540, like splash off the turnbuckle off, you know, onto the outside onto Sting who was on a table and Sting was supposed to move. And Sammy was just supposed to land on the table, but Sting didn't move. So he landed on Sting. And he was just like, he was like, he was in this interview. He was like, man, I was freaking out. I didn't know. I was like, I thought I killed him, you know? And he was just like, but Sting was totally cool. He was just like, he took the blame. Like, he was just like, no, it was my fault. I didn't move quick enough. You know, I, I kind of spaced a little bit. Like, my apologies. You know, I'm good, though. Like, I didn't get hurt. And I was just like, you know what? It, it, like, that is a veteran right there. Like, taking mm -hmm. ownership of right. your mistake. And not blaming like the younger talent, like that's like a ball, like that's like a manager I want to work with. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. just like a mentor I want right. to work with. You know, like that just seems like a really cool dude. You know, so I really respect uh, Sting for that. Um, but yeah, I, between the collision and the battle of the belts, like it, nothing really did it for me. I mean, the Julia Hart and Anna J match up was pretty good. You know, I do see them doing a little bit more promos for, uh, with the women. Um, I think that's an anticipation for something. Um, and I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, but yeah, I mean, not, other than that, I mean, I don't. I think I, the House of Black went against someone. I can't remember. 
Oh, it was like Ed, like Adam Copeland and someone else. And then Adam Copeland also had a match with Lee Moriarty, which was really cool. So like they kind of have Adam Copeland doing the CM Punk thing where he's mm-hmm. kind of like putting over the younger talent and just kind of like having like, you know, like having these younger guys wrestle a legend and like, you know, not losing to them, but like have, giving them a good fucking showing, you know, and making them look strong. Yeah. Um, so I do like that. You know, it's kind of you know, repetitive, <laughs> they're bringing in, you know, these ex WWE legends and doing the same thing. And like, nothing happens without young talent. Like CM Punk also did the same thing with Lee Moriarty and Lee Johnson. So it's just like, and where are they? Nowhere. Yep, nowhere. Exactly. They're doing nothing with them. So that's what my, like, I, I, I just don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're not like Orange Cassidy doesn't need this fucking belt anymore. Eddie, yeah, Eddie deserved the, that belt. I think he deserved a belt. I don't think he deserved the triple crown, in my opinion. You you could have really pushed one of your younger talent in that tournament and literally sent them to the moon mm-hmm. on a trajectory that just couldn't be stopped. You know, it could have been Swerve. You know, and then Hangman could have came back, challenged Joe, and had their own squabble, blah, 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 blah. Swerve could have continued on, you know, and eventually come back to Hangman after he lost to Joe or something like that. You know, like, there was just so many other things I think they could have done with that. And then you also have Christian. So you have, like, kind of like these, I don't know, now, now you have, like, these older veterans and, like, just kind of, not boring, but, like, I don't know. I feel like their championship's kind of discombobulated, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there's, like, there's something... The excitement is gone yeah. in many respects with how they're telling their story. But you talk about young guys. Let's let's talk about one young guy who none of us care for. And the um, background that I chose for today <laughs> speci- specifically to talk about this guy, Jack Perry's uh, uh, what, uh, Sean? Scapegoat. Oh, bitch ass. Bitch ass, yeah. <laughs> that too. Let's talk about the scapegoat. Let's talk about the bitch ass, man. Yeah, yeah. They literally sent uh, an itinerary for this episode today, and they're like, where are we missing? I was like, Jack Perry's bitch ass. <laughs> Thing the hottest it. bitch in this place, remember. <laughs> so a lot of stuff happened this weekend. We had some great TNA stuff, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. You know, some injuries that happened, but uh, some of the big surprises, though, was NJPW, New Japan, and Jack Perry showing up there. And uh, pulling out the the scapegoat kind of armband, right? What a fucking douche! Like, let, let me just how say we feel this. about that. Oh, and tearing up. Let me not forget he tore up Taren- the AEW contract and then pulled that out. You know, and and we talked about what I would be happy seeing him come back and doing. This is not it. No, nah. like I don't. I like I like and like people are just like, oh yeah, you know, you know, speculating like he's still in AEW and they like kind of sent him to New Japan to kind of. You know, work on his chop, like just work on himself, work on his craft, work on his promos, work on his heel work and everything like that. And I like I can understand that, and, you know, but you could also easily just took him to ROH. Yeah, that's what I was thinking on that. Um, but I, I think they want the I think they want the guys like they let him go if it is a work or maybe they did let him go. And he just went to New Japan and New Japan didn't give a fuck about the drama. You know what I mean? And he was there was just like, yo, yeah, pull up the AEW contract, like, and do the whole thing. Like, I think he's so obsessed with being CM Punk, like being controversial like CM Punk was back in the day. You know, like I could see him just wanting to do that and not really giving a shit about the repercussions. Like, yeah, yeah, AEW psh, scapegoat. And my theory, like I texted y'all about, was the scapegoat shit could either be a work or it could be a shoot on the young bucks. Cause I think you know, in my mind, Young Bucks didn't like CM Punk for whatever comments, this, that, and the other, brawl all brawl out or brawl in or whatever the fuck it was called. And probably went to Jack and was just like, yo, 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 do this all in. And like really fuck with him. Like, cause they already fucked up his transportation and his hotel, like his living uh situation, because one of their wives control all of it. And then 
told Jack Perry to do that shit in front of 80,000 people on live pay-per-view. Everyone's looking forward to it. It's right before CM Punk's match. They probably said, do it. We'll take care of you. Make sure you don't get hurt. And then lo and behold, he gets punched in the face and choked out. And they were probably nowhere to be seen and probably did not stick up for him when all the shit came crashing down. So he probably signed an NDA, got fired just like Punk, and the Bucks were nowhere to be seen. So now he's... I was a scapegoat to help you motherfuckers out. You guys wanted to get CM Punk? You used me. Fuck you. And I, like, I wouldn't put that past the Bucks. You know? And if I was in his position, I'd be pissed. Yep. So if it's a shoot and it's real, I'm yep. all about it. Like, call him out. Yeah, if I would it's respect real, him if he yeah. did that. I would love that angle. Exactly. If it's real, it does change the tenor of everything. Yeah. You know, like, even if it's a work, I would still like that a storyline as a work. You know what I mean? Like, I was, you know, the scapegoat for the EVPs, you know, to, like, do their bidding and this and the other, and they threw me to the side. You know, like, I would like that in a storyline. Right. You know, it w like I said, and, the, and that's, like, the weird, you know, conundrum of, like, is it a work or is it shoot? You know, or is it real? Is it a shoot? Like, which is it? And I think that's what keeps us on our toes. You know what I mean? But I think either, no matter what it is, I think I like it. Okay. I kind of changed my mind. You know, at first I was like, man, fuck this douchebag. <laughs> you know what? But like, I, like, if I take out CM Punk getting fired and put aside my differences, like, I kind of like this. You know what I mean? I just like completely did a 180. I'm I am so sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, so hey, look, I, it, it we're talking it out. Yeah, I, like I, I kind of, no matter what it is, if it is, but like if it's if it if it culminates to nothing, yeah, you know, if they don't go that route, like what it is, what is it, what is this route? Like who are you? Or like yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I was I reserving know. judgment personally. When I saw the whole thing, I was like reserving judgment. I saw you were kind of like, you know, you had your feelings, obviously, Sean. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you had yours yet, Webster style, but I was like, I was just reserving judgment personally from my end. So, you know, we, we learn more. Right. You know? It was surprising. I, I wasn't, I was very indifferent about it. Like, I've never been a Jack Perry fan, especially the whole heel turn. I just, I never felt it. But much like Sean and you, in this case, I'm interested to see where it goes and what they do with it. I hope it is a reinvention for the character that is desperately needed. Yes. He As does a, need to change up. The thing is, his heel turn, it didn't really have any weight to it. And I think that's really what bothered me about it. Like it there was no so gravity sudden. to it. No, yeah. no, no substance, right. And if this is done right, this could add a lot of substance to his character. Yeah. And that's desperately needed for him, in my opinion. Even visually, like if you're looking at, you know, uh, Pat's background, like the guy on the left is like the man of the woods, scruffy, been through some shit. Like right. th that looks like he has character. The one yes. on the right looks like they try to like force him into like this weird money mat. Remember when fucking Matt did the money mat shit and <laughs> had his own like organization? You know that's what it contracts, me which of. made no sense exactly now that's that you what it, said it, it does remind me of that. it reminded me exactly of that and that's why i couldn't get behind it because i even hated it when matt was doing it i was like what yeah. the fuck is happening like this is so dumb like i don't understand it like how did matt hardy become this business guru with ill-fitting suits i don't get it you know <laughs> i was just like what the fuck is happening so i felt the same way with him and it was just it came off like it didn't fit him you know, like, I'm banging the hottest bitch in this place. Like, what? Like, really? Like, <laughs> what? No, I don't, I don't, I don't get behind it. I don't like it. Like, I like this. Yeah, cool. My, my wife caught it. She was just like, yo, yo, yo did you see Jack Perry come out uh, looking like the, the man in the woods? And I was like, yes. And that's a very good description. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I literally talked myself into it. If they go that angle. I can still get behind it, you know, but whether it's a work or a shoot, I'm I'm behind that angle. But if it comes right. to nothing, well, we have a few more things to cover. We we haven't even gone over WWE yet. Uh, Eldon, some back backstage issues over at AEW. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Sean passed around. Nice. We saw this uh, 
some things that backstage sort of, I don't know, things with AEW. And one of the things that I don't know if this is what really struck out or stuck out to you, Sean, the uh, removal of any signs talking about Kylie Ray or uh, Bad Mouth and Jericho. Yeah. That whole situation. I'm like, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get, I haven't formed an opinion on that whole situation personally, but I just thought that was in, that whole directive was in poor taste, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's very uh, Vince McMahon era. WWE. Yes, <laughs> um, because there was a, a rumor a couple weeks ago that the same notice went out before like all the Chris Jericho shit, and it just you know it was like no CM Punk signs. Um, so this obviously came out this past weekend during collision battle of the belts and everything like that. Um, because I think it was like a couple dynamites ago when Jericho came out, like when this, when the Kylie Ray stuff popped off and like, I mean, he just got booed. And I'm pretty sure Chris Jericho did not like that, especially when he's a face. And I also think, I don't know if you guys watched the battle of the belts, uh show but i think that's also why they weren't really wrestling in the ring because mm. it was a tag team like no dq bang and most of the fight was kind of backstage interesting yeah i wasn't yeah. interested in that match anyway so i could care less yeah personally. I, like I don't, I don't get it either like you know but that's interesting you're right it's very miss mcmahon miss mcmahon ish uh yeah, again I like i said i just thought it was in poor taste and and honestly I don't know about you guys. After outside of the whole initial forty-eight hours or so of me the first week, I don't hear anybody talking about this anymore. Yeah, no one really. You know, there was speculation that it was made up, but I couldn't really find any hard bullshit on it. Um, you know, Kylie Rae obviously hasn't said anything about exactly. it exactly, um, and until she denies it. I mean, it's specul like it's still, it's still a hypothesis. Like you are probably still a shitty human being, whether this is true or not. Because I know my own stories from people, and I know the stories could eventually come out. I'll say and- this: I don't know if it's true or not, but there's sometimes when you see people that you wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past them. I'm I'm just saying again. I don't know the guy, but. Every time I've heard him speak is just a regular human being, not as a, you know, in kayfabe. He comes across, and again, old school sensibilities, okay? He comes across as that, you know, 80s sort of rock star who does what they want to do and all this good stuff. And again, I just, I wouldn't put it past him. However, like you said, Kylie Ray hasn't said anything. And why should she? She got a baby. I don't know. If, I don't know. Did she get married? I don't know. But I know she had a baby. Like she had, she has other priorities right now yeah. to deal with. Then you know something happened a couple of years ago. If she says something later, that's different. But right now, I can totally understand why. But my point is, the fact that this is no longer really in the public sphere like that, like it was two, three weeks ago, and that they are still pushing this like that. I'm not saying where they smoke this fire. But the fact that they're so pressing it makes me wonder. Yeah. Right. Exactly that. Like, I just, you know, and then the, like, and it, like the interviews of like Tony coming back when that like reporters were asking about Kylie Ray's release, it was just, it was very weird. Yes. Some of the interview. I was just like, mm-hmm. yeah, because I never said that anyway, because it was, it was very all of a sudden. And then she popped up. I don't remember if she popped up at NWA first or she popped up at Impact first. But it, no, it was the other way. She popped up at NWA, and then she was Impact after that. And I know there were things that were said as far as like she took time off of mental health, all that good stuff. But her departure from AEW was just really weird and sudden. Yeah. So yeah. But that's that. Let's let's uh go to quick. Hold on. Yes. A couple more things. Yes. Uh, Andrade. A couple things came out about Andrade. Oh, okay. What's that? Um. Because obviously his contract's up. Mm -hmm. They're expecting him to go to WWE. Apparently Charlotte was pushing for him to get back to WWE and get a push. 
um, obviously Boo thing. Um, but there was some speculation of, you know, back in like, you know, early, like as late as like October, like he didn't really have like an issue with AEW and like was talking about like possibly coming back and like mm -hmm. resigning with them. But like around like the November time frame, he was apparently talking to some of the other talent because apparently he was very transparent about his contract with a lot of talent backstage and about transparent about how he feels mm -hmm. apparently and very vocal about it. Um, and apparently he was pretty upset with how it ended near the end. So I don't know what happened there. Um, but same thing, you know, I, I kind of also sent you guys that link of uh, Brian Pillman Jr. talking about it, too. Um, yes. Where he was just like, I felt like a nobody at the previous company, which is obviously yeah. AEW. He was second you know. guessing himself. Doing yeah, dark second guessing. Yeah. yeah, like doing Dark Matter, like not knowing if he's good enough. And then he gets to NXT and he gets like the biggest push, gets his name changed, gets the name King, you know, gets to do it like, a, sounds like he gets to do a little bit of his own creative, even. Yeah. You know, whereas like, was he able to do it at AEW? Like, I thought you were able to in AEW. Like, have we been wrong the whole time? I don't I'll know. I'll say this. I, I, the Brian Pil the, the Brian Pilman Jr. Alexis King thing, I think that illustrates a lot of what we're saying, particularly comparison to NXT and AEW. NXT has done a very good job of putting spotlights on wrestlers, even when they're not in the title picture. Yeah, like you know who these wrestlers are because they've done a very good job of crafting stories around them. Yeah, even without uh, <laughs> like out the mud, I know who they are. Even though they got pushed into the title picture, they didn't win, but they did a very good job of introducing them. I know who they are. Um, especially is they that what OTM stands for? Yes, out of the mud. Yeah, out the mud. Weird. Yeah, I hate it. Personally. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate I OTM. Hate but and I right. was like, what the fuck is OTM? But I saw the vignettes. I saw the toy telling. You know, they put Reggie in there. I always liked him. I loved his skill. And like I know who knew who they were before they were even involved in a title picture. Yeah. AEW has not done a good job of telling stories if for the most part, if it's not around the title. Yeah. Like I said, for the most part, there are some deviations there, but Overall, compared to an NXT, because I, I can't even give those accolades to Raw SmackDown, NXT and, and that quartet is a crown jewel, jewel of being able to tell stories without a title, in my opinion. That's well, just so my opinion. My thing is, you know, there's certain pr promotions like WWE does a really good job of putting together vignettes yes. and quick recaps of people's, you know, history. And I also noticed that, like, me and Maki, we kind of went on a big binge of, wow. You just started watching a lot of WoW. And like even WoW, like as small as they are and as quick as the episodes are, like they have like these really cool vignettes of they do. every That's single what got me hooked fucking on wrestler. Yes. And then they have good recaps as to what the history is. Yeah. And like they could go like a couple episodes without ever having those people pop up. And then like when they do have their, you know, battle, there's a recap about what's going on like last time on dragon ball z aw i feel like do not do that i think yeah, the commentators right. try to say stuff about their history you know because excalibur is just like a fucking mastermind of knowledge mm -hmm. you know and i think i think excalibur really tries to do that when he is commentating but there's no like video package and that's the issue that in my opinion that is the issue that's what you need like, how is, you know, all these other promotions right. doing it? And then you are just not like you're trying Even to be different, TNA. but like, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I, I don't understand it. Uh, one thing before I know we're about to hop off of AEW, but the only thing I am excited for is this acclaimed and bullet club gold kind of. That's going to be. Like gold that's union. gonna be golden television right there what did they say they said uh oh shit what did they say like yeah, that would be good i like them all bang, what did they say bang bang shit they had a thing and i was just like oh that's so good you know it was like bang bang acclaimed or something like that i can't remember but it was so fucking good uh but yeah it's i can't i can't wait like that's gonna be so good and it's all against the fucking the devil squad whatever the fuck united kingdom or whatever the fuck they're called, right? Or right. Undisputed Kingdom. Kingdom there it is. Yes. 
What did you? Pat, what did you turn? What? Hey, we're getting ready for the next round. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> All right. So, two quick things about WWE. Probably most prominent thing: Seth Rollins was injured in the match with Jinder. Um, I haven't heard any more updates on anybody else heard anything about the severity. No. I was curious uh, towards the end of it. I, I, I don't know if you guys watched it, but um, I, it, I felt like he got injured, but yeah. I didn't see anything after the match. So th it was on dirt sheets or something, Eldon, that he was injured. Yeah, yeah. it's been confirmed he's injured. I, I, I feel like his knee, I didn't get all the details. And I don't know if they said if it's something he can work through. It, he's going to be a, a teeth. Like, I, I don't know, but. Some of the things, and I didn't get to watch a lot this morning because uh, I went to the office, so you know, I curtailed any <laughs> sort of morning wrestling yeah. uh, news that I usually get. But I, I don't know if WrestleMania is in jeopardy for him. And mm. I think that's a concern. Or having to relinquish the title, maybe? Who knows? Wow. The dirt sheets are saying that he was limping backstage, and they believe we'll have more knowledge on Wednesday, which is today, but nothing. Yeah, no today. it appeared to be like it. I don't know if, if y'all felt the same, but it looked, you know, looked like something happened towards yeah. the end. Yeah, it did. Yeah, definitely. So gotcha. that's one injury. Next injury is poor Jade, who just came back. Right. Tore that's, ACL man. house show, and she's going to be out for up to a year. Bruh, I feel so bad for her. Yeah, you for know real. What sucks? Man. You know what sucks is apparently I, I read that apparently she was supposed to fake an injury. Like a knee injury, like in the beginning. So there, there is a a work of a knee injury, mm -hmm. and as she is like going through the match, like working this knee injury, she lands awkwardly on that leg that she was that's horrible making injured, and wow, damn, ain't that fucking shit? You just came back too, yeah. Bro. And they were it looked like you know by all appearances they're doing a push on her. Finally. Right. Yeah, 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 they were. Yeah, so just sad. Yeah, yeah, that's so real sad. But again, I I think that NXT is so packed with women. I I, I think that when she could, there's a lot of women they could push, and a lot of stories they can tell until she gets back. So I oh, yeah. is I don't think it's one going to be one of those things where oh she wasn't gone and you forget yeah. about her because yeah. again like I NXT, felt Cora was would have won the match last night. I, I don't know if you watched it last night, yeah. uh, but just how instead Roxy got it to go against Lyra. It felt like they're it, to me. If Roxy or if Cora didn't hurt herself, she would have been in that, and she would have been next to go against Lyra because of the way it felt like they're pushing her right now. Yeah, yeah. Because Roxy, right, you yeah. know, she already I, had the title recently. You know, maybe give Cora some shine. It, it felt like they're kind of going to do that, but the accident happened. Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Sad. I know at least Braun Break is happy. She at home right now. So he can enjoy some some Cora for himself. Oh, I heard. I saw they might have broken up. Oh, word. Yeah. Outside, yeah, bro. Up. Somebody yeah. else enjoying enjoying. Cora. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. One last spot. Uh, we had the reintroduction of TNA. Um, Hard to kill. A great show. Uh, and one of the things that was teased, they said it would be a debut that was Christian Cage le level, and I was like, who in the really? And they did it because Nick Nemeth showed out showed up at the end yeah. and now yeah. he's in a program with moose and i was like yeah i i didn't expect that bruh yeah. i know you're the nxt tna guy well the tna guy impact guy now tna um was so when i saw that over the weekend with these two popping up i was like oh snap even more <laughs> give me more you already kind of got me excited right. about kind of checking out the product because you're such a fan of it and now <laughs> with them two popping in <laughs> Yeah. Be, be careful with your hand gestures there, dog. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I tell you, though, I didn't expect Dana Brooke, but I think we've talked before. Oh, it's about, Ash by Elegance, bro. Yes, yes. Yeah, Ash, Ash by Elegance. Elegance. Sounds well, like a fragrance. We talked before, especially how it does sound like a fragrance, how her turn at NXT, she really started to come into her own as far as a performer. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what she does because we, we've talked before about how TNA has always handled their women's division well, even when the, sh the show sucked. Yeah, the women still were great. <laughs> Can I just say something? Yes. With Pat's background, I could not tell that's Dana Brooke. Yeah, you're right. Oh, really? She has changed her fucking face so many times. She's had so many surgeries. On you her know, face. 
And because I remember specifically what her face looks like when she was tag team with Mandy, when both of them were like the fucking the built, you know, muscle yeah, mommy is called? coming out there. I forgot I what they were know. called. They were called something I forgot, but like they were a good duo and they they fucking squashed that shit, man. They fucking ruined that. Yeah, so that was did. a great they were with that being said, here's what she looked like at the thing. Bro, like, I didn't even recognize different. her first. Completely like, different. Seriously. Yeah. Like she, like, bro. I, 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 every time I see her, her face looks different. I'm just like, bro. I she, she got to cut with that. She yeah. she's already a, a good looking. You know. It, well, hey, I don't know. That, no, that as looks, long as you're happy, you know. To me, it's it's you know, this what makes you happy. But like, picture looks like like one of them fucking uh, what you call it? One of those purge masks you find at fucking Party City, and she just popped that shit on. I'm sorry. <laughs> like that's what it looked like. Like the contouring's so dark. Like the blush is yeah. so exaggerated on her top cheek. Like that is, whoo. Like there's two different skin tones there going on. I'm just, like, come on, man. I don't know. It's just it, it. When that popped up, I was like, who the fuck is this? Ash? Who the fuck is Ash? I had no clue who it was, dog. I was like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> and it took me a minute, and I was like, oh shit. Shit. It wasn't until I got on Twitter and I was just like, that's Dana Brooke, bro. Right. What I saw fuck? that Dana Brooke was tweeting. I'm like, why is Dana Brooke trending? Like, and then I'm looking, and this is before I saw it because I, I was watching a replay. I didn't watch it when it happened. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I was like, okay. Bro. And I was like, that's I, a whole lot of ass I makeup. No I saw uh she did a quick interview, I think it was, and she was saying how um she's happy to be in TNA, obviously, because WWE was not taking her seriously and was not taking her and they weren't seriously they weren't. no yeah. they weren't because i think just like natty she was a phenomenal fucking wrestler yes and i, I think they constantly kept them at mid card just like they do with natty like they'll never be in the title picture again but they're good for backstage you know morale they're good mentors but there was nothing else for them and i'm glad she recognized it i'm glad she's somewhere else same with nick namath like same thing with him Hard worker, looks phenomenal, great, amazing wrestler, very talented, but like he was forever going to be mid card. Like they were never going to give him another title shot. Like he was hot when he came in, you know, he was hot with Bobby Roode for a little bit. Um, and then they just had no direction for him. And like, I mean, my, my man's like 44 years old and right. he looks fucking amazing. Yeah. I had no clue he was that old. <clears throat> yeah. Like yeah. I was like, God damn like and like that like the reaction reaction the crowd had like i think this is a great place for him and yeah. i think this is is uh, a great challenge to go against moose like that's just it's gonna be yeah, i'm excited to watch it now man i might be tuning in there with you webster style yeah, I, good. I said it i went into uh my fellow today i'm like i need you to set this to record <laughs> oh yeah that that I, just reminds me yeah i should set my DVR. i keep what forgetting channel? that i have Philo on my phone i'm like oh because i don't like i don't have the roku and stuff set up in here because i usually use anything through my xbox long so he's short so i don't watch it all the time i watch the recaps or whatnot i'm like oh yeah it's on my phone i, I can just watch it there okay great <laughs> so what channel is it on for those that are um, watching it's whatever. on access uh um, tv access. Yeah. X-S. yeah or you can pay what the the tna plus Streaming service is nine ninety nine, or you can be a YouTube insider for four ninety nine and, and get. I ain't gonna be spending impact. money right now. I gotta watch the product first. So no, what? Time, what day is it on? What time? What time do I need to set the DVR? Uh, Thursday at eight, if I remember correctly. Thursday, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Thursday but, eight on access. I'm excited. I'm excited because, well, for all of this, I feel like if you could, I wouldn't say quite that was a master class on reintroducing a brand. But it was damn close, in my opinion. Uh, they they did everything right. Everything was on all, all cylinders. And more importantly, you can tell the talent are all in on this. <laughs> that is, yeah, <laughs> right. Oh. I just remembered yeah. something. One last thing. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, Webster. No, you're good. But uh, our girl, Naomi, at this yeah. event, you know, obviously. Right. She lost Trinity. here. Lost Jordan the belt because she's gonna be coming back. But I think thought think I saw on the dirt sheets that that may not be true. Um, she's uh she's gonna have another match against Jordan yeah. Grace. 
Yeah, she's advertising uh, oh. being either either this this week or next week. I can't remember what. Well, you know they is. taped though, so oh. they tape a bunch. Like they taped on. They had the Snake Eyes event the next night, next day. So those matches are being shown this Thursday, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So and they do a bunch of tapings and then they're off and they come back to a bunch of tapings and then they're off. Interesting. Uh, so that you still may be the case okay. that she still could show for the Royal Rumble. You're right. Okay. So right, but yeah, so I saw that, but I think the the article I read about that was the issue is WWE doesn't like it when T when talent they have is still on other Promotions. programs. So yeah. it was more so depending on how long the tapings go out for, as far as when she will be shown. That's what the at least with the article I read about it. That's what the issue would be: the fact that one of their wrestlers will also be on another nationally televised wrestling program, um, and it's brand new footage. It's not like old footage or anything like that. So that's what I read. But I I firmly believe that she's going back to the WWE. I think it it sucks for the knockout division, but I got a good division. And yeah. I'm going back to Ash by Elegance. I'm very interested in seeing what they do with her. Oh yeah, I think I'm very yeah, that'd be cool very excited. She does. Yeah, oh, but this is a point I wanted to make before we we sign off about that. They put up on their website, they isn't seeing that. They put up on their YouTube the first impact on Spike, the first two hour live impact, and I forgot how large those crowds were. Because I think with uh, hard to kill. I feel like they said it was like 1,500 people or something like that. And it seemed like it was that little people. Uh, it seemed like it was a lot more um, when you looked at the artists and how they cut everything. But to see where they were for that show, with being so many people, I'm just thinking, wow, how we dwindled to these little small venues. And if they have buzz like this going forward, I really think they can get up to a, a higher stature. I don't know if they'll be a number two promotion, not money, but they got the hype. And then they keep doing things like they doing. I agree. AEW needs to watch out. Mm -hmm. It would be nice, man. It's just better for all of wrestling, yeah. wrestling fans. You just know, have more outlets for the wrestlers to move around to. One yep. person we forgot to talk about was Mustafa Ali. Oh, oh yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. The I'm, I'm so happy for him. I am yeah. so happy for him. Yeah, and there's he like there's like moving the needle. Yeah, man, he's apparently making like big moves for indie promoters, like with ticket sales apparently too, and that's like the big talk now. Because I think what he was at MLW, um, he has a joint coming up at GCW on the nineteenth against Gringo Loco, um, and I think he's doing New Japan too. He challenged someone in New Japan. Uh, was it Shibata? I think it no, is it wasn't Shibata. No, it was ah. Uh... Yeah, it's no, somebody whose name I recognize. I don't, but yeah, that's in April in Chicago, and he, that's his hometown too. Yep, 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 yep. So he's he's doing. So I mean, all these people we're talking about got, got released. I mean, they're they're popping back up, and they're they're moving the needle for these indie promoters uh, promotions. So let's see what happens, man. Because I mean, I'm I'm happy. Like as long as these people are happy, I'm happy. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. And then oh, oh, I think yeah, Nick Nick is also doing something against matt cardona i believe isn't he? oh yeah yeah i think i saw that they're they're having yeah. a match oh okay yeah either that oh, or you know or what matt I... either that or matt's talking shit <laughs> oh no no they're having a match I, I saw like the the poster for it yeah the, the indie god yes <laughs> that's gonna be good uh, it's, it's gonna be great so hey, it's great a great wrestling. time to be a wrestling fan yeah, and then next week we get to talk about our our, our rumble predictions. Yes, yes, mm. <laughs> and who's going to show up? All of that. But before we do that, let's do what we did last week. We predicted Mercedes Monet. We all lost. What are we predicting tonight? Dynamite. We have uh, Rampage. We have SmackDown. We have Raw coming back before the next time we record. What do we think will happen between now and then? Hook's going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Easy. I think I think we each have to pick something different because we all did <laughs> and we all lost. Let's at least see who's gonna get a win. So you got hook gonna lose. Eldon, you already claimed it. Yeah, I claimed it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sean, what you got? I got I got Andrade popping up at either a SmackDown or Raw before the Rumble. Mm. 
Oh, really? Okay. You know, I, I, I think that's possibly going to happen. I, I think they're saving some other surprises uh, for the Rumble. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to predict Andrade pops up before the Rumble and then casts his vote into the Rumble. You know what? I kind of want to follow you along with because uh, we saw on SmackDown last week, Carmelo um, talking to Nick all this. Mm -hmm. possibly signing now to SmackDown because they got to bring him up. But actually, no, because they, they still got to do a thing with Trick. I think there's a whole thing that they're going to have them beef. I don't know. I don't know. You're not really watching NXT, Sean, but there's like, if you watched like uh, last night, they're I in like some, this big yeah, uh, trio Dusty Rhodes Ila, tag Asia. team champion yeah. uh, well tournament right now. I think they're going to cost them something else. So I think they still want to keep Melo down there for a little bit to kind of do that beef before they bring yeah. him all the way up. Even though right. it, it, it's not making sense because the, the whole Nick Aldis thing last week. Um, but again, we talk about long-term storytelling and doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's what I want to say. But at the same time, I don't think they are. I, like, as soon as I came to my mind, I don't think they are. Mm. But that is long-term term storytelling. But they are intermingling the two right now. Shit. Um, who else is going on right now? I think Katana Chance and... and uh, Caden Carter. Caden Carter. They they need to lose those belts. I think there needs to be a better team on. The, uh, with, I agree. I, yeah, I totally agree. they're like fill ins Whoa! right now. But and I you, like them. But at the same time, come on now. Yo, no. What? What? Just, all right. What I don't is your see problem those girls them? keeping those belts that long. I, I agree. Better teams good right chemistry. now. They have some. They who, do. Who? Who? But they need who? a team. This is the thing. Look, I'm, and I. am I'm, I'm not excited about, by them. I'm, I, I'm, exactly, I'm, they need a team, a team that brings some excitement to those tag team belts because nobody cares about them. Yeah, I want Sean. I want to be excited by them, but it's just. But who? I get what bored out my team? mind to be honest, bro. They don't have structured tag team, women's tag team. They don't. There's in no WWE anymore, yet, and they, they haven't be. in a while. Chelsea Green and Piper were thrown together. Made and, zero and that's sense. Not a great team either. No, I agree and with you. They're not a great you, team. This that is ruined, like another fill-in team. Um, that ruined. But Sonya's no, supposed to I come back. No, I don't think this ruined. I think that helped because they were a tag team back in NXT. They were an established fucking team. Oh, they, they were. were oh, I know they were. I love their yeah. chemistry and the, like. Don't get me wrong. Their gimmicks, a little too <laughs> broad. Like we're the party EDM girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's boring. And what sucks is. I think it was like a live show when they did their uh, Christmas thing. Uh, fucking Stevie Aoki was there and they did a thing with Stevie Aoki, but it was for a fucking live show. Like they need to bring Stevie Aoki out and like DJ a set for them to come out to and help them like cake someone on live TV. And I think that would get hype behind them. Yeah. But like yeah. they saved it for a live show and it did, you know, I saw a couple videos of it. But like you need to do that on live TV, you know, like just, something like that, and yeah. it would have been so much better. But yeah, I I don't know who I don't want Piper and and Chelsea to get it back. I don't care about that. Yeah, I don't like, want them to have it either. But and I don't care about Indy and fucking Candice, and I don't no, care about garbage. fucking. Uh, there's one other one. There's Tegan Knox and Natty. Like all these people are just like thrown and together. Elber I mean, Fire and the other chick. I don't even remember who our tag team partner is. Bro, that's who they're apparently. Yes, 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 yes. They're gonna win it on SmackDown because they're facing each other on SmackDown this Friday. Who? That's my prediction. There you go. Who? You just help me there. Who Alpha Fire and Isla Dawn. They were established. Right. Isla Dawn. That's right. NXT. I forget the other girl's name because yeah, 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 she had yeah, another yeah, yeah. name before. They're taking the title. Yeah. yeah. Gigi Dolan. No, 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 no. No. Alpha no, no, Fire no. and Isla Dawn. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. And they had the titles uh, at NXT. And shit, I don't ever even remember them losing the NXT titles, Eldon. Yeah, they uh lost it it was a consolidation of those titles. They can what? So they lost them to whom? I don't even remember. No women's tag Again, right now. We don't care about the like they have W is not done a good job of making those titles something you care about. Just yeah. like oh, it, just like the king thing went away. Remember how Zelina and, and yeah. uh Yeah, the Queen and the King of the just, Ring. They just went away with that shit. They hey, that lasted that. longer that than happens. Yeah, but that that lasted cool. longer than these then I'll excite me for these tag team belts. Yeah. But anyway, that's my prediction. Yeah. I, Sean, I, I 
I, man, I, I love them both. They're super cute, but just, dude, it, like, yeah. I, I want to get up, but <laughs> I get bored, bro. Like, yeah. what is going on? It's like they're trying so hard, but it's like, not even the crowd is with it. If you watch these matches that they're having, it's just stay up. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, that's my bring prediction. In, bring in Steve, Steve Aoki, man. Bring yeah. The, uh, one of the motherfuckers and just like bring the hype to him. And I think that would be they good. Would get, they would get over. All right. Well, there you go. Those are our predictions. Let's get up out of here. Uh, Sean, tell us about Geek Classic. Geek Classic's coming up February 17th, right after Valentine's Day on Saturday. It's our monthly show. It's going to be our first show of the 2024 season. Uh, it's going to be like classy fucking, you know, jazz nightclub speakeasy vibe to it, but also still nerdy. You know, not too weird, but it's going to be nerdy and classy. If you, you know, if there's like an intersection there, this is it. So if you like it, please check us out. Go on to Eventbrite, uh, look us up, Geek Classic or Nerdlesk Festival, um, and you'll find it. And yeah, there's VIP. There's a couple of VIP tickets still left. Um, come check it out. Nice. All right. And how about you, Epstein? What you got going on over there? At Sartorial uh, Geek. A lot going on uh, this week. Uh, since the last time we spoke, I uh, got a whole interview, well, two interviews with Alfonso Lay's Delta Star Friday. We just talked literally all about fragrances, 45 minutes just about fragrances and stuff. So, you know, my wheelhouse. Uh, today, dropped a full interview with him. So that's how also uh, this week I critique the Prada for all menswear line for the fashion show and the Gucci for a menswear line as well. And then also we'll be doing a Game Bites for Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. So all that's coming out. It's out now, and by the time this comes out, most will be out, and Prince of Persia will probably be out in a day or so. There you go. Show love to my peoples. Webster style, Sean Mongo. This is your boy, Kui P. You're already on NRW. You know what I'm doing. Check all the other the links, the script, you know, everything on here. We doing it. Um, Shout out to my team, man. Love y'all. Webster style, Sean Mongo. Your boy, Kui P. We're out of here. In a three, two, one. Peace. I did it backwards that time. <laughs> you come in my face, I'm going to fight you. Well, you're not going to bust a nut anytime we're in the ring. I'm going to get off by cranking your knob just a little beyond the breaking point. When I get my hands on you, I'm going to eat your ass like a pot of collard greens, baby. I'm going to stretch his ass like it's never been stretched before. You can hide behind that commissioner's stuff just so long. Until I jerk a knot in your ass. And if you don't think I'm big enough, then you grab a hold of me, and you'll know that I'm growing, my man. Within your hands, I will get as big as I need to be, as big as I need to be to do the job on you. The Rock just jerked Helmsley off. There's one part of our bodies that's soft, and it ain't soft all the time. If you catch my men, I'm gonna come on you like nobody's ever come on you before. Just you and I getting it on like two men should do. Oh, no. oh that, that, that's it, right. Corey boy. I'm coming hard. <laughs>